In this video, I'm going to analyze a driving test report sheet from a learner driver who failed her test a number of months ago up in Burr in County Offaly. I'm going to explain what went wrong and I'm also going to let you know what the tester said to her about her mistakes. I'll also share with you her own thoughts and reflections on this driving test. I'm doing this so you can learn from her experience and hopefully avoid making the same mistakes that she did. So let's start by having a look at the driving test report sheet now. So as you can see, it's not too bad. She got 10 grade twos. Now you're only allowed eight, and if you get any more than eight grade two marks, that's the blue boxes there, that means you're going to fail. So she failed by just getting too many marks on position particularly, and observation as well. Um, a little bit of background on this driver. She's originally from the USA. She has 29 years experience of driving over there. But you have to understand that just because you have um, 29 years experience driving in America doesn't mean you're going to adapt in a good way to Irish roads, at least not straight away. Driving in America is a lot different to here. Um, in Ireland, there are more challenges. There's definitely more variety of roads. Sometimes there's a lot more narrow roads. There's more roundabouts and you probably have to adapt to a manual instead of an automatic which is in itself is a little bit more challenging she also failed previously in kilkenny and then she changed test center i presume because she was able to get a quicker date and she went to burr in county offaly of all places so she probably had to deal with a new test route um a new test center let's say so maybe there was some unfamiliarity as well with certain roads she pointed out in the email that she was slightly flabbergasted that she lost five marks on positioning because she doesn't understand this. The previous instructor in Kilkenny and her more recent instructor in Burr always said that her positioning was good. So she seems confused as to how she suddenly lost five marks on this area. But just because your position was okay in previous driving experiences, doesn't mean that it's always going to be okay in different roads and in different counties. It's not that simple. Because with driving, a tester is going to use his or her discretion, and driving has quite a few gray areas where there's no exact black and white answer. Sometimes there's just an answer that's somewhere in between. A few years ago, for example, I did a DNA test, and it came out like this. I turned out to be 93% Irish, 5% English and Northwestern Europe, and a couple of percentage there, Scottish. Now, if I was to do that DNA test again, and it subsequently transpired that I was 93% Mongolian, well, I'd be scratching my head then, and I'd be thinking, what the hell is going on here? Is this some kind of um, conspiracy or something like that? But that wouldn't happen, because science has plenty of certainty, lots of certainty, whereas driving has lots of gray areas. Just because she was okay on previous roads in terms of position, in a previous county, 75 kilometers away, does not mean that her positioning will always be flawless going forward. On this test, she was driving on different roads, possibly with different conditions, and definitely with different challenges. As you know, the driving test can make people nervous and stressed, and therefore mistakes can originate from that. And often, because of the intensity of a driving test, a learner is often not going to remember all, or even some, of the faults that were incurred. And I understand she probably feels hard done by and confused. But remember, with a tester, it's nothing personal. And you have to also remember that there's no smoke without fire. So the candidate here lost a mark on position on the straight. And after initially being very unsure about where this mark might have been lost, she reflected in her email to me that maybe um, she may have veered a little bit kind of right and left like that, for example, on what appeared to be a more country and a more rural road. And as I was saying, Irish roads are different to American roads. So that illustrates that point perfectly and how you have to be always aware of bends and twists and turns and holes and things like that up ahead. She also said that maybe she was a little bit too central like this on one of the lanes when she should have been more to the left. Her driving instructor said to her that you should always, always be um, left of centre like that unless you're taking a right turn, like for example, there. Now, that is so completely and utterly wrong on so many levels. It's lazy analysis and it's not the right message to be giving a learner driver. 
yes, generally speaking, you would be left of center, just like the yellow car is there. But it's not as simple as that because you may have to move out to avoid a drain like that. You may have to move out and stay out to avoid parked cars. Like if there's a parked car here and then another parked car here, you generally wouldn't be weaving in and out of the parked car like that. So by that logic, you just the other instructor is saying you keep left and then come out. And I mean, you know, it doesn't make any sense, like at least not in the real world anyway. You may have to stay out to avoid parked cars, as I said. And you may have, like if this red car is taking a right turn here, the red car may have to stay in a slightly central or right of center position as well. If there's a hole, if there's a park car, if there's kind of a build out island in the area there. Also in relation to position on the straight, you usually do not keep really, really tight to the left like that if it's a wide lane. I mean, if you if you think of how wide this lane here appears in relation to the size of this figure here, it looks like you could fit another yellow car here and maybe another one there. So there's no need to be hugging the left, uh, extreme left side of the of the lane here when it's such a wide lane. So by being just that little bit more central, I, w I won't say I won't say central like that, like, but just slightly left of center, let's say. So you're kind of in the center of the lane, but more on the left side, let's say. You're being in a position there that you're able to see enough ahead of you, and you're also keeping out to avoid drains. Now, if that lane was like really, 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 really narrow, well, then you would very much stay in the center then because of the narrow lane. But as with everything, you have to judge the space that you have, and you have to judge each road individually, and then react based on how much space you have in your lane. She also lost the mark on position turning right. Again, she's not 100% sure where this mistake happened, but she did tell me in the email that very often when she's taking a right turn, so let's say, for example, the learner driver is the yellow car. Very often when she's taking a turn like that from a major road into a minor road, she has a bit of a habit of going a little bit too far like this and then trying coming like that because she says she's a bit nervous of the red car here. She's a bit nervous of hitting the red car or getting too close to the red car. That sounds a little bit dramatic, but maybe it's a thing that she just has in her head from being so used to driving on the other side of the road, maybe. But there was also another time when she was taking a right turn similar to this, but as she got down further, the road seemed to widen, get wider like, and as it happened, the road markings were became quite faded basically and sometimes when you have cars that are regularly passing over markings like turning right or this guy turning left for example the excess volume of traffic going over the white lines it does cause them to fade over time so she thinks that it could have been in that area there that as she was coming down the road widened so then the white line for example came over here a little bit to the right and she should have been more over there in line with the road markings and she thinks that that might be where she lost the mark there because of the faded markings. And this, this illustrates how important it is to get lots of driving lessons in the local area that you're doing your driving test, just so you can be aware of potential black spots like this. She lost two marks on position on bends, and she genuinely hasn't a clue what happened here or why she lost marks here. And often drivers are, are they're at a loss to explain it because they find it hard to remember what happened here but generally there's two types of bends obviously there's kind of, kind of like a left bend like this where the bend disappears to the left up ahead and a right bend which i'll show you in a minute now if you have a left bend like this it's incredibly important that you first of all diagnose the left bend from about 70 or 80 or 100 meters back okay that way you're going to be prepared for it and you know what's ahead as you can see here you need to keep central in your lane if you're taking a left bend like that so the reason this red car here is better off in a central position is of course to avoid holes and drains that might be close here but also to give the driver of the red car a slightly better view around the wall here and if there are any pedestrians walking towards the traffic being central means you're going to see them a little bit earlier and a little bit better plus if there's parked cars around this uh, bend here that you can't see at the moment well then being more central means you're going to see those parked cars a little bit sooner and therefore you can react a little bit better then. Here we have a right bend. So this is a bend that disappears to the right up ahead. Now in this area, you do need to keep in a left position, left of center, like, like the car is here. And the reason for this is two main reasons, to improve your view and also to make sure you avoid oncoming traffic. But not only that, but that you have a nice little gap in the middle there between the red and the silver car because remember she has a 
a left bend so she might be more central as you can see in the picture there so being left here will give you a better view and it will help you see beyond the bush a little bit more and as i said before in relation to the other bends watch out for the signs okay this is a sign from from england or the north of ireland in the south you'll have the yellow and black signs but the signs can kind of help you to uh, predict that the bend is coming up and therefore get in the right mental state to be able to deal with the bend properly. So in summary, if the bend is a right bend like this, keep left. If it's a left bend, like the previous picture I showed you, well then keep more central. I have a video uh, specifically dedicated to position on bends. I'm going to leave a link in the description and in the first pinned comment. So if you'd like to check it out, it's going to be there for you to watch. The next mark the learner told me about was position turning left. Now she says that in general the tester was quite good and quite articulate but on one occasion he gave her an indication to turn left very very late and look that can happen maybe the tester got a little bit uh, flustered himself or he wasn't paying attention momentarily and sometimes a late direction can take place they are only human after all so the learner driver was felt she was very very close to the junction herself here and then she got the direction to turn left and because of that, she says she didn't really have time to adjust herself and she may have been either like maybe too straight like that, for example, or too central like that or whatever. And she felt because of the late direction, she didn't have a chance to get her position right uh, on a left turn from a minor road to a major road. Look, I, it's understandable. I can certainly understand how she feels stressed and hard done by there because if what she's saying is true, it certainly doesn't sound like her fault. But if you feel you are being the victim of a late direction yourself, what you need to do if you sense that the junction is coming up here, like a T-junction is coming up, and the tester, for whatever reason, is a bit late with his directions, what you need to do, okay, is get off the accelerator, come onto the brake, slow down, even drop a gear, okay, even if it feels you're driving too slow, you're better off doing that because then you're creating the conditions then to give yourself more time to react to the direction when it eventually comes. The next mistake that the learner got was on observation moving off and this was for not getting a proper blind spot in fact not getting a blind spot at all when moving off on the hill start the learner said in the email to me that she just simply forgot the blind spot after the hill start she felt that when she was moving off here on the hill it was a very small hill and the fact that it was not a difficult challenge to move off on this hill just kind of threw her off a little bit and maybe it lulled her into a false sense of security. She was probably more focused on getting the bite and moving and not on the observational part. But folks, you have to remember, if you're doing a hill start, okay, not only are you being tested on your ability to not roll back once you're moving off from a park position, but you're also being tested on your ability to indicate properly moving off, check your mirrors and your blind spot. Because if you get your three mirrors here moving off, you're going to be able to see everything that my finger is pointing at here, okay? But if you don't get a blind spot, that's looking over your right shoulder. And when I say looking over your right shoulder, I mean looking out the back um, passenger window, okay? So it's not, not looking out this window here like he appears to be doing in the picture, but actually turning his head more and looking out the back, looking through the glass of the back passenger window here so you can see all this area here it's so important to get your blind spot when you're moving off whether it's a regular moving off or whether it's a hill start um, it's crucial because you cannot see everything with just the mirrors alone and furthermore make sure that if you're delayed moving off maybe because some traffic has come up from behind you or because maybe you made a mistake and went to the wrong gear or something like that, make sure that you refresh the three mirrors and blind spot so that your observation is fresh and up to date. The learner also mentioned about losing a mark on observation turning left. The tester said to her that she was in a queue of traffic here, maybe it was three or four cars in front of her before she was taking the left turn from a minor to a major role. So say she was down here, okay? Now she apparently checked her mirrors fine back here so she got the middle mirror and the left mirror and indicated and all that and then because of the slow moving traffic the tester said that you didn't refresh your mirrors before you completed your turn because with everything that was going on down here like like the, the queue of traffic there could easily have been like a jogger or a cyclist coming up here or something like that so just because you checked your mirrors back there doesn't mean that's going to carry forward for the next 20 seconds you need to kind of recheck the mirrors 
if you're in a slow moving queue just to keep things fresh and keep things up to date and that shouldn't be too hard because it's not like you're doing a lot of multitasking if you're standing in traffic that's stationary or very slow moving you can definitely afford a couple of extra mirror checks while you're waiting look at this example here we have the red car here and then we have four parked cars okay one two three four and there's oncoming cars here too now presuming there's no oncoming cars you're okay to go but if there is a left turn down here where my finger is it is incredibly important that you double check the middle and the left mirror um, around about this area here just as you're coming back in after the last red car this is so important just in case there's any pedestrians or cyclists waiting or maybe hidden behind the red car and it also acts as a refresher mirror check as well as i was alluding to in the previous example because you might have already checked your mirrors moving out here uh, you may have checked your mirrors say here for example to take the initial left turn but because you're changing position you're practically changing lanes here it's incredibly important to double check the mirrors there just before you come back in after the last part car the learner also lost the mark on right of way turning left and she does remember this incident reasonably well so she was the red car taking a left turn from a minor road out onto a more main road now there was a couple of cars coming and i think what might have happened was the learner might have got worried about progress so first of all there was a blue car and a yellow car let's say now she was just imagine the blue car was kind of further away now than what the picture is illustrating so she probably had doubts in her mind about uh pulling out in front of the blue car but then as the blue car passed her by she probably thought to herself oh you know maybe i should have made that or i, I could have made that and she was thinking then oh i don't want to lose marks on progress here so what happened then was she abruptly pulled out then in front of the yellow car there when now the learner says it was okay there was plenty of room and even the tester conceded that maybe it was okay but what the learner needed to do then once she was out on the road say here and fully facing this way the learner needed to give it more acceleration just to increase the gap so she didn't cause that car to slow down so the tester was conceding that it might have been the right thing to pull out you might have just about had enough room but you needed to give it a bit of acceleration then especially if it's a good safe road like and then that increases the speed and you know avoids taking the right of way or of another person and avoids causing them to slow down next we have the reverse around the corner where she lost the mark on observation okay so reversing around the corner here now she did the reverse around the corner pretty well she didn't go too wide um she yielded the cars if she needed to and there was no problem with competence but observation is where she lost the mark now she thinks at the start of the reverse she kind of rushed into it a little bit put it in gear maybe give a quick look in the mirrors and then just went back she concedes that she may not have given a full all-around look around here it's so important that when you're starting your reverse around the corner okay one of the very first things you do is put it in gear and that turns the lights on and lets people know what you're doing so it highlights you a bit more but you have got to do a full 360 degree look around before you go just to set the scene just to make sure that there's nobody like crossing behind you here for example or nobody maybe coming down here and about to cross or whatever just to just to get get a gauge of of the area that you're in and then as you're reversing around the corner it is so important i've said this time and again do not look in your mirrors all the time okay do not stare in the mirrors you have to be looking behind you the majority of the time okay so you have a better view of any pedestrians or cyclists because mirrors are grand they are helpful but they're going to have a lot of blind spots okay it is okay to stop about halfway around and give a full look around if you want or you can just keep going without stopping but it's very important to keep the head moving uh, check your mirrors yes but also check both shoulders if you have a reversing camera you can use that too just don't look at it all the time you have to look behind more than you look in any reversing camera and you have to look behind more than you look in your mirrors next we're going to talk about a turnabout here it appears that she didn't reverse back far enough the tester said you needed to use more of the road space available to you the learner said that the tester brought her onto a very uh, narrow road and look it's up to the tester where he or she brings you you could have a nice wide road or you could have a narrow road um like this the the learner as you can see in the photo here was also very worried about the trees okay there was a number of trees on both sides and she was worried that if she went too far back the back bumper might clip the uh, trees which would not be a good look obviously now 
it, this just takes practice, okay? I can understand her fear of hitting the trees, okay? But I just took I took a few photos for you to look at here, okay? So this is me revert. This is me when I stopped on my reverse, and I was way too far away from the curb. I mean, I would have had another half a meter, meter and a half to go before I should have stopped here, okay? And then this next photo here, then then is when I reversed back and I've used the full width of the road, okay? I haven't. I'm not near the curb and I'm not near the trees, but you can see there the difference between the two pictures, okay? The curb comes down and meets the door panel in different places on both photos, okay? It's a hard one to explain in a video. It really just requires lots and lots of practice, okay? You have to use the bits of your car's anatomy, like the door panel here, for example, and then you can see there where the curb disappears under the panel and how it disappears under the panel in a different place in the other photo, okay? The more practice you get, the better your spatial awareness is going to be. And then briefly in relation to the grade one mark on hazards, the tester said to her that there was a red car, for example, reversing into a driveway like this, okay, and the learner driver was the blue car. The tester said that he sh that the learner driver should have just slowed down a little bit more as she was passing this area here, just in front of where the red car was reversing in. He said it was grand, there was no real danger, it was nice and safe, but if you just slow down as you're passing by this here, it just shows that you're um, reducing your speed just to reflect the potential for any danger or in case she goes into the wrong gear or something like that. So he said you didn't do a whole lot wrong, but if you had been a bit slower, it just would have, would have looked better, okay? And the other grade one then is in relation to getting the headlights mixed up at the start. So the tester asked her, can you show me how your full headlights work? And instead of um, pushing the, the light control, she pulled it, which meant that you were flashing instead of um, turning the headlights on fully. So again, not a big deal. It was just a grade one mark, but uh, probably nerves, bit of stress, bit of over overthinking maybe cost her there. But they're only grade ones. It's the grade twos here that cost her um, in the end. If you have been supporting me by PayPal, or Revolut, I want to say a big, big thank you. It means a lot to me because you're allowing me to live the dream of being a full-time YouTuber. So thank you very much. If you would like to support me, links are in the description and in the first pinned comment. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and I'll be back soon with another video. Until then, all the best. Slongafol.